Smith. Yeah. I've, I've known designer for almost 10 years. Yeah, we got music that goes all the way back like 10 years ago. But um, a lot a lot of shit never came out because he was dealing with Ye, and that whole Ye situation was just so, like, intricate. You know, right. I, I couldn't just, like, put the records out and, you know. So, you know, um, we, we just linked back up recent, and it was like... Um, in the studio, we was just in the same studio vibe. It was like a real like mm -hmm. we just bumped into each other and um, we just we just got, got some work in mm -hmm. like you know, bro. Super I mean, talented, you guys had the fuck know? the bullshit joint and, uh, going on for a while. Yeah, we get we, we got that joint. We ain't even put I, I ain't even put it out like because I've been doing so much, man. I've been moving and shit. I just moved in a new crib and shit. So I, I've been like. I've been just doing right, right, get, right, handling right, right. priorities first, you know. But I got, I got, I got that shit. I'm launching a whole, um, all, all my musical endeavors and my videos. I, I got videos and shit shot. I'm, I'm launching that what after the. Uh, year was that when you day. dropped the four nugget piece? Was that 2021? Last year, yo, my dude, last I year. love that project a lot, man. Last year. That, yeah, the four piece nugget four project piece, was piece fire, nugget. son. Yo, you that yo, the lemon pepper freestyle yeah. that you laced, dog. <laughs> you was backstroking on there. Yeah, but let me tell you something. All of them joints that I did on that four piece nugget, that four piece nugget became the blueprint for like um mm -hmm. if you think about like Coast Contra. Them niggas rapped over all the four piece nugget beats, bro. Like, like, like listen, listen to they shit. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I think I think they I think they dope as fuck. Oh. I, um, I love them. I love those kids. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they'd be cap if they if they say that that shit <laughs> yeah. wasn't influenced. You know what I'm saying? Cause, cause I know one thing about my shit. My shit always be the meta. But then niggas always try to sleep on me like. I ain't the one, you know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, I turned L.A. Leakers into facts. a display of lyricism. Can't facts, facts. Nobody deny facts. that, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, like, now, if you go to the Leakers, it's about them. But like, don't even come up there to promote nothing. If you ain't, if you ain't got Good them bars, stay, point, stay home, bro. You know what I'm saying? Do some internet promo. Don't. You go to Leakers, yeah. you got you to gotta be one of them boys. You know what I'm saying? So um, I was like the progenitor of that. Like I, I, I put that energy, you know, up there, and um, everybody that, that that followed suit, they came, came with a similar format. Even like J Cole, when Cole came up there, he did the same kind of format. He started out mm -hmm. with a beat that was kind of the, in the groove, right? He went and found that, like, you know, and then he kind of then he right, switched right, the beat, right, then right, he, right, he yeah. did the faster flow, like he. And, and, and then like Big Sean, right? So I was, I was at a joint, this rooftop, like, like industry joint, and I seen um mm -hmm. Big Sean and them niggas was there. And um I walked up because I had seen Sean's oh, weekly, he smoked that shit though. Right? Oh, he yeah, he Sean, Sean is one of them boys to me. So so uh, um I was wondering if he was gonna say something about mine. Because anybody who came after me, I felt like they took a piece of that personally and was like, nah, The first man, person that you know, I gotta... you say that was Common. They smoked Common, smoked that shit. Smoked it. Yes. Because then remember, right, like, right. Common, right. Fab, Royce, like, it mm. got, it got, right? So when I seen Sean, I was like, I wonder if he's going to, you know, because... Because cause we right. kind of cool, but we ain't, like, best friends. But we kind of cool, right? So I'm standing there, mm. and it's, like, right at the end of COVID. So, you know, right. niggas still got masks on and shit. So yeah, he's, like, yeah, behind yeah. the mask. And I'm just, look, I'm just waiting for the nigga to say <laughs> And uh, let me tell you what, one, what, what broke the ice. Breezy was right there. I love the name dropping like game over here. I love it. <laughs> 
Yeah, Breezy was, he was, Dave mm -hmm. was, uh, Sean was at like his table. So Breezy see me, so, so Breezy like, cause I got a single with, with Chris Brown that, that I ain't released yet. So Breezy was right there and he was like, mm -hmm. yo, Lowe's, cause he always show me mad love. So he like, come damn near jump right. over the table, just giving me love, right? So when Breezy showed me the love, it kind of broke the ice with Sean to kind of like mm -hmm. let his guard down a little bit. You know what right. I'm saying? Whether it's a social thing or whatever, it's just, I ain't saying it was personal, but some niggas would be socially awkward. It's just some niggas would be in their own space, be chilling. You know what I'm saying? So I know that because Chris is like that. Chris is very like, he has like a social anxiety to a degree, but he's a very, once you know him, he's a very mm -hmm. inviting, loving person. But he might be in his right, own, right, right, own right. bubble if you don't speak, you know what I'm saying? So once Chris spoke to me, and Chris was like, yo, I heard you got the gym. I heard y'all be hooping and you be, you got the gym. I'm like, yeah. Right. So he like, nigga, I'm trying to, let's run, let's ball. So then, so then Sean mm -hmm. was like, yo, nigga, let's go. Let's rock. So Sean hoops, right? So right after that, Sean tapped me on the, on the side and was like, yo. <laughs> Yo, your leaky shit was crazy. And it took it took all of that for it to happen, but you know, it's like that. It's the industry. Sometimes people treat them niggas so weird, it be awkward for them niggas to be normal and just or niggas used to sit against niggas. So, you know, but I was just um that was one of those moments of clarity for me of like, I know what impact my LA leakers had in a lot of times. If you don't set the precedence and set the tone verbally, you will get overlooked right. and people Good won't right. um, acknowledge, right. you know, that, 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 that you did it's almost, something. It's almost right. like sometimes you got to speak so, to yourself sometimes, right, Luz? Yo, you got to do everything yourself, Brody. If you ask me, right. if you ask me, bro, you got to do everything yourself. This is, uh, this, 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 yeah, I'm trying to do it. So I don't really want you to be. You, you good, Lose. Let me just good. handle this. What I'm like. So you don't have to like you just keep it upstairs and I bring I bring everything. Right. As soon as I'm done this and then I just move everything in the, in the garage. Make a picture you like it. Dang. Right. Yeah. I do all oh, the decoration. I just like right. I like art and shit, bro. Like I just got this piece too. This this piece and I and I did this, this really? flower, like I made that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then yes. I got the lion. So the whole thing, me right. back up. The right. whole thing is like one piece. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really into interior decorating. So I did the, the white. Everything got the, the theme, black, the white, the white, the black joint. Right? I'm seeing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like the belly style. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's so all belly. I wanted the belly. I'm getting the picture too that they had on belly. Okay. Be okay. Right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but 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 like I was saying, everything is you telling your story and 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 not letting the next man. That's why they call it his story because it'll end up. The, 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 you right. can't let the next nigga tell it for you. Because if you think about history, right? History is. It's a lie. A, a large part of history is, is off. Like we learned, like oh, that, so that never happened. Yeah, because it was, it was his, it was his story. That that nigga told it his way. You know what I'm saying? And you you ever been involved in a situation and if something got back to you and a nigga told you, yeah, man, I heard about you. Like nah, nigga, that shit yes. wasn't even. Yes, who the fuck, right? <laughs> so, 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 when whenever you're dealing with history, always know that you're dealing with somebody mm. else's version of reality you know what i'm saying so, so whenever everything that i'm doing is a self-proclamation of um just me paving my own way going through my own adversities and telling my own story my way and and so that's like with everything that's that's what just, what's the key i'm just the like story? that be more we know that you're, you're one of the illest writers of all, top, top tier writer, top tier freestyler, top tier lyricist. Go Tapes, I still write yeah. Go Tapes is fire. Like, what's your story, Los? My, my story is, um, mm. my, my story is not finished. You know, um, it's still developing, but like, 
a main part of my story is this. My dad mm. got murdered when I was 16. It's kind of, mm. kind of like where my story starts. Um, vicious mm. murder. You mm. know, like, got shot in the head. You know, so, you know, shit was devastating for me as a, as a, as a young man, right? And so going through that adversity and um, struggling through trying to identify yeah. with losing my best friend and, and my father figure, like the, yeah. the person who was making me a man, um, I, um, um, I started writing. I started writing poetry. I started reading lit literature. You know, I got into... Um, Robert Frost. Emily Dickinson. Emily, wow, Emily that's Dickinson. old school. Okay, um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 Allen Poe, Poe, okay, okay. Shakespeare, right, right, right. Shakespeare, and and um, I got into the literary works, and then um, I started to express myself through. So that's the validity that I got from rap was that when my father transitioned. It was the catalyst or the conduit for me to either adopt these talents or adapt right. to them. Either way, this was how I honed in on my art form because it was my freedom of expression through being like a depressed teen. That's, that's the inception of King Lowe's rapping. Then, let's say I'm 16 now. My life is different now. My dad's gone. You the I'm trenches, in the boy. You the trenches. Baltimore, which we already saw. We in the trenches, right? And so now right. I'm honing this craft, right? Two years later, I'm 18. Graduate high school, and niggas is like, yo, you dumb nice with rap. In two years, niggas like, yo. And I'm like, all right, but what that mean? Niggas like, yo, you need to do something. Like, you could do something with it. I'm oblivious to this because I'm rapping as a real thing. I'm not, I wasn't right. rapping, oh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do this. I'm rapping to, 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 mm. to cleanse, you know. Therapeutic? So, um. Right, right, therapy, right, right, right. I feel it that. was therapy. Mm. It was there. It was the coping mechanism. So, niggas like, yo, you should do something with the shit so when they tell me that so i start going on a quest to try to find what you do where you start mind you i have no i didn't have nobody to tell me so i bumped into these i bumped into my my next door neighbor or the girl across the street keisha i used to go over there and kick it with keisha and butchie they did that was her brother butchie me and him was cool and it was keisha they was older than me. I used to go over there and just kick it with them. Keisha like they a girl from the project to live on the fifth floor. She sound like <laughs> Keisha always. It's always right. Keisha. Right? So 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 I, they would smoke and, and always be like, yo, rap. Like throwing a beat. Wait, let them rap, right? So I'd be rapping, they be smoking. So she like, yo, I'm gonna introduce you to my my, my, my baby father. He got a record label. So one day, I see a nigga pull up me in a drop top, big body bends, drop top. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we from the trench, we from the hood, so this shit look, this like, yo, who the fuck is that? She's like, oh, that was my baby father. She said, I told him about you, he gonna come back, he wanna meet you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, he moving like that, if he moving like that, yeah, put me. Stop it, pull up, pull up, pull up. Right? I'm, I'm like, hey. this nigga like, who, who, who your baby daddy, ho? Like, who, who you fucking with? So... Long story short, Keisha linked me up with some fucking kingpins, man. And the niggas was kingpins. Niggas was moving like that. Mm. But they was making a transition into music. They was making a right. transition and like away from the street shit into like trying to build something positive. And when he met me as an artist, it just we just went, you know. And um, he went and got a couple other artists from the city, and um. We started with, with what was called the Block Records. The Block Records, okay. The Block Records, right? I see somebody put the block in there. I see somebody put the block right there. The Block is right there. The Block is right there. Right there. Right there. The Block, block right. Records, right? Okay. 
And um, it was legendary for Baltimore because it was like the first time Baltimore had seen that conglomerate of street blended with, with the money and with the talent. Mm. You know, it was almost like the first time the world saw like BMF. Mm. You, knew, you knew them meets and them niggas was real. And then the niggas they had was talented. They gave you the Jeezys, the Jody Breezes. The, you know what I'm saying? So that shit was a thing. So we had like that, if you could think about that in a smaller context, mm. in Baltimore City, because Baltimore was always a drug city. It was always a heroin city. Correct. Right. Baltimore so, Love Thing. City they had a song called Baltimore Love yeah. Thing. So, 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 so Baltimore was never known for like music, out uh, on the rap scene because what niggas felt like in Baltimore was like, man, that rap shit corny, nigga. Like, if it ain't street, it ain't nothing, mm. right? Niggas even felt like the NBA was corny, nigga. Like, and, like they, they, and you know, that's the street mentality, right? right, 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 right. That's kind of how niggas was giving it up, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, um, we went on to do our thing and then it created a lot of attention. So the feds was on it heavy. And um, by the time I got out the hood, I ended up signing with the Puff. Mm. We all went up there, right? And um, a bunch of turmoil broke out with my label. Niggas in the label turned on each other with some street shit, you know, a lot of shit went down. So you was independent early? I was in independent first. first, first. Okay, well, all the yeah. way up all the way up until um Puff Puff, Puff. gave me a, Puff gave me a half a million dollar deal out the hood. Right? So and mind you, this is back then. So this this is bread bread. Mm. And um the day that I'm breaking my album down, my CEO's um girlfriend got kidnapped. So we had to shoot all the way back to B more. When we shot back to B more, the first phone call I got from Bad Boy was that we dropping you because the feds ran up in Puff Studio and y'all niggas got some heat with y'all. We ain't know y'all was had going on. And it's it's too it's too right now, Puff coming off the shine shit. It is like it's a bad timing for that. So we're not moving forward. Right. I was literally stuck back in the hood, nigga, for six years. Right after, after, after right after that. Right after I got out on. I'm talking about I'm on on bro. Like I'm puff right hand. Man, right. Like I'm I'm on and you know what I'm saying? I'm chopping my album down. We finished. We finished the album. So you know how my heart was broke, you know what I'm saying? So I'm back in the hood for 6 years, bro. In the hood in the trenches, bro. And now it's up cuz mind what I said. Right, 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 right. My right, right. CEO, my CEO go to prison. Everybody around me go to prison. I'm left by myself. In the hood, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um shit was real, nigga. <laughs> what what do you do in music at the time? Are you, are you, were you removed from music? Were you still writing music? Were you still doing music? I was still, were you still doing I, the studio? I was still doing music, but you gotta understand this was pre the internet. Mm. So the internet had just got popular, well, had just submerged when um when I got signed to Bad Boy. So mm. like now, Twitter, YouTube, popping. This, is, this is the thing. It wasn't popping yet. It was the new thing. Okay. Okay, got you, got you. Okay. It wasn't popping. Soldier Boy had just got signed because he was 16. He was the, he, he, because, so YouTube didn't get innovated till after Soldier Boy. Mm. Soldier Boy was early. And then, remember, Cassie got signed off of MySpace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so wow. all, all this, all this was going on. I get, um, you know, I go home, whatever. I'm back in the trenches. Now, 106 and Park come out, and mm. I'm, I'm watching all these artists going freestyle Friday, going all this shit, man. Heart broke, and I'm like, Coast the boy, hell, real, even <laughs> nigga right. from my city, even Backlund from my city, Backlund one, wow, fat boy, mm. yeah. So I'm watching all this shit happen. I'm just heartbroken, nigga. And then, so now the internet is popping. I started doing all the little Wayne freestyles. Anything Wayne dropped, I dropped a freestyle. So I was like on Wayne Hills. I was chasing Wayne. And when I did the Amelie, the shit went viral. Freestyle, yo. I did a what phone call. What kind of hip hop? Huh? Did that make 
Wolfstar? Yes, sir. Yeah, we made it made, yeah. it made it made and this is this is like true viral. Like ain't nobody paid to get me no slot. Like this is true viral, right? So six years later, bro, I'm watching 106 and Park. I'm about to give up on give up, man. Because it it's like, damn, nigga, I just it, it ain't for me. It, it ain't gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? And um and um that that day that I said, man, like, yo, I just, maybe I got to face reality. Maybe I got to just hit these streets. And because I had been avoiding, you know, niggas had been offering me, you know, p positions in the street. And, right, right, you know, right. hey, nigga, hey, you, you know, you niggas was my niggas, nigga. You know, you good. You just, woo, I can woo, 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 woo. And I was like, nah, man. Because I, I was, I was there. So I know what it was like. I was like, nah, I was there. I just got to make it back. I just got to, somebody got to see me. And that reality wasn't getting closer, nigga. And, and so it was getting... It was it was it was hurting, bro. And I just sat there. And I remember the day that it just haunted me, like, damn, nigga, you might not never make it. And um, that moment, the phone rang, no exaggeration. And and somebody said, "Yo, this nigga puff, puff trying to get back in touch with you." And I said, "They said, is it okay if we give him your number?" I said, "Nigga, yes, please." They is it me. okay? Shit. Right. <laughs> They gave they gave Puff my number. The nigga reached out and said, "Nigga, I just seen you rapping on some shit on the internet." He said, "Nigga, fuck that. Let's go. Let's go." Is this around the sway, sway in the morning time. No, and all that? Okay. no, okay. I had made it to sway. Okay, okay, okay. This is literally me doing shit in the hood. Okay, all right. But putting got it you. on the internet. Got you, got you. Nigga, yeah, like yo, you. nigga, it's t it's go time, nigga. So I'm like, how did you see my shit? He said, nigga, I was sitting there with Cassie. Your video came on. And I'm like, see, that's the type of nigga I need. I need a nigga like that. And Cassie was like, Puff, that's Los. And he's like, what Los? He, he said, this the Los you had. He said, get me that nigga. Mm -hmm. Six years later, nigga. And so, and so I get with Puff. Um, this time he gave me 400000 Give me 400000 Um... This shit changed my life. It got me out the hood. You know, mind you, I did my first deal, right, with him. I have to give no money back. Once they dropped me, they didn't say, yo, you owe this, you owe that. He did the second deal and say, look, because I gave you the first deal, gave me the bread, you know what I'm saying? And I changed my life. I moved out of the city because at that point, I'm like, I got I to gotta go to wherever it's at. So I moved to Atlanta, did Atlanta for a year. After that, somebody said they wanted to work with me in L.A. They flew me to L.A. I slept on their couch. And I wrote them their first <clears throat> hit record. They were signed to Columbia. They paid me to do that shit. I took the money, got a crib, moved to LA, never went back to Atlanta. I never went back. Since I took the trip, I never went back. I had a truck come, move all my shit, move my whole family to LA. And that's kind of like the King Lowe story, the beginning. That That's the, the beginning. So we ain't, we ain't got to get too, uh, too far in it. But... um. That's just the beginning. Wow. That's just the beginning. We're, we're going to do more of the chapters because it gets <laughs> real. It, it gets Damn. real. It gets real. It gets real. You know what I'm saying? But that was a good, um, you know, like my man Puff really basically just always gave me a, a bread to get, to get out my situation if you really look at it because I never really put music out with bad boys. You know, I didn't put a lot of stuff out. But Every time the situation diffused, he never made me owe him. He never took my publishing. I never got a bad contract or nothing. He never said, yo, you owe me this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? To me, that's just like a nigga always being there. No matter how I seen it, he still was the nigga who was there for me. Right. The most out of, out of, you know what I'm saying? So wow. that's just love to me. Right. Yes, sir. So let's go ahead, man. <laughs> I love the 